Hello and welcome to this Let's Play of Oblivion Elder Scrolls 4. I am Waze and this is our main protagonist. This is our friend Johnston the Crow. Now, for those of you who have been watching my Morrowind LP, uh, welcome back to the channel and thanks for watching again. And for those of you who haven't seen the Morrowind LP, firstly, go and watch it. <laughs> and secondly, welcome to the channel. Uh, just this is going to be a quick episode. I've done, I've put the prologue out there already for this LP, and this is just a quick uh, episode for character creation, just to go through some of the mods I'm going to be using, uh, a bit more, just a bit more context around Johnston's character, and also just to go through some of the things that will be different on this LP to my previous LP. So, in terms of the the character himself. Um, Johnston he's not really he's more of an anti-hero than a hero uh, I said the prologue gives the in-depth backstory so I do recommend you watch that it, it's it'll be the first thing in the playlist which there'll be a link to the playlist below so Johnston isn't really skilled at anything but he's dabbled in a few things and he's he's fundamentally a troubled character so it's uh, it, this is gonna be a very weak character build and a big part of the story is going to be how Johnston overcomes those character weaknesses and flaws. If I'm honest, there I am a bit nervous about whether or not this will be too weak uh, a character build. So I've already come to terms with and accepted that there may be a point in the story or some points in the story where I may have to, to drop the difficulty level. I'm hoping it won't come to that, but this is this is more about a story than it is um, about building an all-powerful character or min-maxing or beating the game. It's about telling a story. So, so for me, um, if, if if that happens, it happens. So yeah, essentially, um, that's that's Johnston really. Whereas in the Morrowind LP, it's a series, the main character in that, I sort of do have an idea of an end game. I don't have an end game idea for for Johnston. So this is going to be more about, um, really, about how it's going to rely on how his character evolves and and uh, develops. So let's uh, let's uh, kick into this and start. Uh, Johnson's been looking at these forms, wondering about what he's going to put on them before he gets off the boat. They won't let him off unless he's filled them in. So obviously, race he's a Nord. Um, that's uh, clear enough. In terms of birth sign, not going to go through all of these. I'd say at this stage. Uh, at this stage, most people who, if, who are going to be watching this have probably played Oblivion and have a good idea what these are. So just cutting straight to it. Going to go with the Warrior. So 10 points of strength and endurance. As I said, Johnston not really particularly skilled at much. He's, he is, he's, he's stocky, he's strong, he's fit. Um, so strength and endurance really fit with his, with his character. So we'll go with the Warrior. What's next? Next then, specializations. Obviously, we're gonna go with a custom class. Now, stealth and magic aren't really strengths of his, so it's gonna to have to be combat, just to fit with the, the role play of the character. And again, look, he's, intelligence-wise, he's not a stupid guy. Like, he's, he's not an idiot. He's got some street smarts, and he can pick up uh, concepts, and there's certain things he can learn. He just wouldn't be, he's not overly book smart, sort of academically smart in that sense. Will parry wouldn't be too bad. His agility is not too bad. Again, speed, personality is okay. That can be a problem at times, though, when, when he when when he gets down, when he gets moody. Uh, so we're going to go with again strength and endurance because those are those are his strengths in that sense. Now this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> this is where. Yeah, well, uh, let's wait until we put them all in, and then I'll comment. Right, as I went through in the prologue, he did learn some alchemy skills. So that's one thing that he does have, that a skill. Obviously, it's basic level at this stage, and that's going to have to evolve and develop, and he's going to learn more. But alchemy is something that he has. He is fit. He's kept himself fit across the years uh, through through just, just making sure he's always kept, kept active. So athletics fits, again, with Johnston's character. Um, blade, blunt, except he doesn't have any weapon skills. Um, uh, as I said, Johnston isn't going to use any weapons at all. So now, 
Never say never, depending on how his character develops, something might happen, something might shift. But at the moment, the way it stands at the moment, and for the foreseeable future, as far as I'm aware of the character at the moment, hand-to-hand -hand is, his, is his combat. Um, so again, he's not going to pick pick up on the uh, pick up the weapons. Um, I said unless something significant happens, and I'd be excited to see if something in the story actually leads to that. I can't think of anything at the moment. I can't control. There's, there's nothing I've got in my mind that I can contrive to get there. So it's more about let's see, let's see how it happens. Um, now another one I'm going to take is marksman, which might seem to contradict what I've just been saying about weapons. Now, I'm taking Marksman because of uh, Johnston's alchemy skill. And I've got a mod, a couple of mods in where you can throw any item, which means you can throw potions. And there's a lot of potions in the game, especially the Elder Scrolls game, sometimes which just seems like pointless potions. They rarely get used. So this gives an opportunity to use some of those sort of damage potions in, in a different way uh, to be a bit more creative about how, what we do with them and it also just gives Johnston a little little something extra from a combat perspective it just it bearing in mind he's only hand to hand there may be times where he does need to keep his distance which is going to be difficult with <laughs> if he's only got hand to hand so the potions from a character development uh, from fitting with the backstory it sort of works and I'm, I'm happy happy that I could I'm able to put that in there so that's that now Again, in the prologue, it says that he learned some basic restoration. The way I'm going to play this, because uh, look, this for those of you who have watched um, my Morrowind LP, you'll 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 know that my play style and the role play style that I use. For those who are new to it, I'm I'll only be doing things that my character does. It's just I'll, I'll only be doing things my character would do. So even though I might know something in the game, um, if I do this, that that's the best thing to do. It's, it's, I'll be making decisions on whether or not the character does it. So from a restoration point of view, following that principle, Johnston has learned some, um, I keep going to say Zasiri. <laughs> Johnston has, he, he's, he, he knows healing spells. So I'm, I'm okay with learning different healing spells or healing type of spells, but anything else in the restoration field outside of healing of some kind, I'm, Johnson isn't going to be using those or learning them. So again, so it's it's a very limited restoration skill that he has. Now security he has. Again, in the prologue he was saying he he was fairly good at sort of picking locks and disarming traps, etc. So I'm taking that as a major skill. And then speechcraft. Again, he's he's like he's he's calmed a little bit over the years. He's learned a lot from Sven. Uh, how to interact with people, etc. So he he can be quick enough um, on his feet with regards to speechcraft, and he's a fairly good reader of people in that sense. So I think that's all of them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's the seven majors. So I think that's uh, that. Now with regards the name for the custom class. Johnston was thinking about what he was going to put on the forms and it's a new life and he's um, he, he's going to he's going to learn to spell properly first Archeol uh, what am I doing Archeol uh, Archeologist yeah. he's going to go with he's going to say he's an archaeologist simply because he, he doesn't really know what to refer to himself as so because of Sven and that's what Sven does. He's figured that's that's what he's basing that on. So that's what we're going to do there. So here we go. Just a quick check on these. Specialization is combat, strength and endurance uh, are the, the main favored attributes, and then alchemy, athletics, hand to hand, marksman, restoration, security, speechcraft. Now that most definitely is not a power build. <laughs> so if we were looking to beat the game, this is not a build that we would go with. So, as I said, more about the story. It's about how he overcomes his, his limitations. And, uh, yeah, we will see how it pans out. So, yes to that. Now, anything else we need to put in here? Social status. Around this, again, thinking about these, what he's going to put down. He's going to follow, in terms of his forms, what he writes down, what he looks at as his background. I'm going to go with the academic and... Tamrielic history just in terms of 
what he's learned from Sven, uh, that he did odd jobs and handyman stuff, sort of manual labor as well, but he was also learning as he went. So there's a bit of Johnston likes to think of this as a new start and maybe he can actually make something of himself. So this is what he's gonna, he's, he's gonna put down. And I'm putting down he's comfortably off because Sven gave him a hefty amount of gold when he left, uh, which he's obviously extremely grateful for. Um, but I'm going to go with that and we will start in Anvil and Johnston doesn't have any diseases so that's all of our forms done right so hopefully that all adds a bit more depth now and understanding to the character we've put some stats around it so if we have a look here what have we got so our strength 65 and our endurance 65. We've got intelligence 30 and willpower. So again, sort of just below average. Um, agility and speed at 40. Personalities down there at 30, so not great. And that would sort of fit with his, uh, that would fit with his, how could we say, how he interacts with people when, when he's um, in, in his darker places. First things first though. I don't know what the hell he's doing with that dagger in his hand. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Johnson didn't pick it up. <laughs> I'm blaming the game. <laughs> and look, Lux 50. So look, that's uh, that's his, his main stats there. And if we look at his majors, 30 in athletics and hand-to-hand, -hand, 25 alchemy, 30 restoration, 25 marksman, security, and speechcraft. And then some of the other things he, he, he gets down here, like he's got, he's got 20 in blade here. And we can put that down to the fact that there was a time where he used the blade. It's just been a very, very, very long time. Um, he's been with Sven at least a, at least a decade, and uh, it was a, a long time since what happened to to his friend Henrik, uh, even before that. So it's been a been a long time. So nothing else jumps out there. So that's those no factions and yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's um, that's Johnston's character. Now a few things that I want to go through here. Uh, just about the, the the mods i've got i've got five quest mods put in now i think maybe i could be being a bit ambitious with that <laughs> but what the hell let's see how it goes i'm just going to touch on each of those quickly just to give you an idea of the, the type of lp it's going to be first one i've got in i've got is is one called windfall which is just like a whole new area uh, it's almost like a dlc so it's it's it's, it's a completely different area nothing to do with vanilla uh, places, people, things, um, creatures, and and it's it's an opportunity just to give some some new content around 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 the game. Then there's Kragoneer's Death Quest. That one is a series of lengthy quests. There is a bit of a humorous tone to it. It's got its own main quest, and then it's got a lot of, a lot of side quests as well. Um, another one is AFK Way, and that one it just this it builds up the village of Way outside the Imperial City. Um, there's a host of new buildings, NPCs, quests, etc. Um, those three mods are sort of, I'm put those in just for additional filler mods. The main two quest mods I'm going to be focusing on are the Aeliad Steps, which is, it's, it's like a, a transportation system around the Aeliad Ruins. There's lots of hidden ruins in there. Uh, apparently there's about 50 new dungeons. There's, there's a couple of player homes. There's, there, there's, there's a whole host of things and the thing with these steps I believe is they, they they can be very random they could take you to the strangest of places they could take you to somewhere where you know um, they could take you to somewhere you've never seen before they could be quite random and I think at a certain point as well vanilla NPCs can start using these steps so that adds a whole other set of randomness to to the game as well so it should be it should I'm looking forward to that one it should be interesting and then the last one here again another one that I'll be focusing on is the Lost Spires, uh, and this is like the archaeology guild that Sven told um, Johnston about. Now you can join, you can move up the ranks, there's new magical items, there's creatures, a whole, whole load of NPCs, and by all accounts there's 15 additional hours of gameplay. So with the slow pace that I play at, those of you who have watched Morrowind, you'll, you'll, you'll be aware of it. If anyone's here looking for speed runs or a fast-paced, action-packed, <laughs> LP then maybe this won't be for you uh, this really is it's it's more of a storytelling approach that I'm, I'm going to be going for so the alien steps the um, the lost spires those are the two main focus but as with a lot of these things sometimes time needs to pass sometimes between cat quests 
I might need to level up a little bit. So the other quest mods give an opportunity to to um, to spread all of that out. So it's highly unlikely I'm going to be doing highly unlikely I'm going to be doing any of the the vanilla quests um, unless they sort of overlap in some way with any of these modded quests or if if the story leads to it so it, it, again I'm gonna allow the story to, to, to sort of dictate where Johnston goes what he does and then it'll be based on his character so those are the quest mods then I'm just going to touch on a few of the other mods I've got in there I am using Mascar's Oblivion Overhaul which is just it, it just it's just it's it's a big overhaul mod it covers everything from enemy leveling to adding items locations changing combat encounters even down to lighting in certain places it changes a whole host of things so uh, there's a few overhaul mods out there I like Mascar's and I've been using it for a while so um, we'll, 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 you'll see things about that as we go now the next one this is this is quite an important one. It's made by the, the mods made by the same uh, the same person. It's the, the Mascar, and this is called Ultimate Leveling. Now you do have some options about what kind of leveling you go for. I've chosen to go with a, a, an experience based, an XP based uh, leveling system. So you get a certain amount of experience for for fights, battles, for lo uh, finding locations. Uh, for example, if you find a, uh, if you find a location that you haven't been to before and it's close to a city, it's not that dangerous. You'll only get a measly amount of experience. Whereas if you find something that's way off the beaten track and is a lot more dangerous, you get more experience. So it's I think from what I've seen, it's fairly balanced. Um, I like what it adds, what it what it adds to the game. And what happens then is when you get experience to get you up a level you then are, you have points to allocate across your major and minor skills so it's a bit more like some try off the top of my head some other games that some party based rpgs like Baldur's gate or divinity original sin etc where you get your experience and then you decide where to put your points now i'm not going to use that to to sort of to game the system so for example if it's a series if johnston hasn't done any sneaking i'm not going to go sticking points into sneaking just because i need them I'll, I'll, I'll be fair on how I allocate those and in the, they'll be allocated in development with the character but I just I like that option of actually been able to um, I've been able to allocate the uh, the experience so that's that one obviously as you can see I'm using the alternative start mod um, I've spoken already about the the throwing uh, throwing using anything as a, as a thrown weapon now I've got a couple of Dwemer Ruins mods in there. Uh, again, if you've seen the prologue, that's referred to that. I refer to, to, to the Dwemer Ruins in, in the prologue. And I've I literally, I've been into one. I needed to go to one so I could record some footage for the prologue. And I have to say from what I've seen, they look, they look pretty good. So I'm quite excited about those, um, seeing some Dwemer Ruins in the Oblivion universe. Uh, I'm going to be using a different UI uh, called Northern UI. Uh, just simply, I think it's a bit cleaner, simpler, easier to use than the original um, Oblivion um, user interface. Then the last two mods, I've got Persuasion Overhaul. That gets rid of that uh, uh, the, the mini game for Speechcraft, which I hated. And the main reason I hated it is once you got the hang of it, it you could just you could just work, you figure out how it works, and it just becomes too easy. And it just means the skills that the character has are irrelevant. And bearing in mind I'm, I'm doing a roleplay based character, that sort of it goes against uh, how I like to play the game. So, and then the last mod then uh, I'm going to mention is called Fergus Companion. So it is a companion mod. And I'm doing this because I don't think Johnson will survive on his own, <laughs> especially at the beginning. He needs some help. So we'll probably pick up a follower, uh, hopefully early on. And, uh, and 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 that will give Johnston the help he needs. So look, all in all, I think there's enough mods to change the experience, make Oblivion feel a bit new or different, especially for people who might know the game inside out. Um, it does mean there may be some parts of mods that won't be voice acted, so we're gonna have to do some, some Morrowind style reading. I'm okay with that and hopefully you are as well. So last but not least, just wanna talk about just a few differences to how I'll be doing this LP compared to Morrowind. Firstly, they will be shorter episodes, and the main reason for that is file size. Uh, the Oblivion file size is going to work out at least twice as big as the Morrowind ones. So everything from from rendering videos to uploading them, the time it will take if they're too big, 
uh, I'm just going to shorten them down. Um, another reason for the shorter ones is uh, oblivion and its propensity to crash. It's for me. It, it's always been the most unstable of the three, or the main three um, Elder Scrolls games in in terms of, of crashing. So I've got the game as best as I can from a stability point of view, but it's it, it's going to happen, and it happens more often. So I love the game, but it can be frustrating at time times. It just means I'm going to probably be doing more editing, and because of that, and time being a factor, I'm just going to do shorter episodes. Now. I'm going to start off, I'll start off when, when I start rolling it out, I'll do it once a week. Um, but depending on how much work it takes, if it's manageable, because of their short, their shorter episodes, I might put it out twice a week. So we'll just have to see how that one goes. So that's, um, that's it. That's our introduction to, uh, well, additional introduction on top of the prologue to this LP. Give you a bit of, um, uh, go through some of the fundamentals, what I'm going to be doing, how I'm going to be doing it, what my sort of overall aims for the LP are and uh, just to give a bit, of con bit more context around the character, put some stats to it, for, for want of a better phrase. So th that's that. Thank you very much for stopping by. And if you've got this far, then I hope you'll be joining us in episode one uh, of Johnston the Crow's Adventures in Cyrodiil. So again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, take care.